tuning in to our first vlog. My name is Matt, and today I'll be showing you how I make my version of South African pineapple beer. The first thing we need is a clean, empty, 10 liter bottle. I use water bottles that I buy here in the Philippines. Next thing we need, of course, is pineapple. Couldn't make pineapple beer without pineapple. So in order to, to make the pineapple beer, we take the top and the bottom off from the pineapples, but we leave the skin on so that the, the skin can allow the pineapple beer to ferment. The skin has natural yeasts in it that help that process along. Next, we add one half tablespoon of dry yeast. The purpose of the dry yeast is to get the fermentation process started. Lastly, we take one kilo of sugar and we will melt it in some water and add it to the process at the end. The water will be about six liters, so we'll get about six liters worth of pineapple beer out of, out of the process. So let's start. The first thing we have to do is chop the pineapple off. I've already cleaned the pineapple, but it's important not to scrub it with too much uh, soap or bleach or anything like that because the natural yeast on the skin needs to be able to be preserved and that'll take it all off. So the first thing we're going to do is cut off the tops and the bottoms. like so. Throw those away. It's not really that important to worry about all of the, the extra pieces, like the, the pieces of the skin that will come off, because we're going to filter the pineapple beer later. So we start to cut the see the the pineapple it it looks a little bad that's okay because all we're really worried about is the sugar and the flavor so you want to cut slices that are about that thin, that way it has more surface area that the, the uh, beer can work with. Again, don't really be concerned about the, the pieces of the, the skin that have fallen off because we're going to filter it when, we, when we're done brewing it anyways. So the way that I've found that works best for me is to cut it with the skin facing me and the meat facing away. That way the knife gets a nice cut into the skin before it, it hits the meat.
pineapple away later. like I was talking about it's kind of you if I was going to eat it but in reality it doesn't really affect the taste of the the pineapple beer at all in fact if anything it probably makes it better <laughs> So next, we're going to add the yeast to the pineapple. This is going to kick the fermentation process up. I already have a, a package of yeast that's open, so I'm not going to open this one, but I already have here. So we're going to put a heaping tablespoon of, or sorry, one half tablespoon of instant yeast into the mix. Then we'll seal it back up for the next time. I have enough yeast for about 200 years. So next, we're going to come out to the dirty kitchen and we're going to add water to our pot and we're going to start to heat it. We're only going to heat it a little bit. We just want to get it warm enough to get the yeast excited about the process of fermentation. So again, we've got one kilo of, of unprocessed sugar. We're going to let the, the water start to heat up. I'm going to go get a wooden spoon. Make sure that the sugar is completely dissolved into the, the water. Now, the way that I like to gauge this is that 
Ah, it's almost perfect. If you put your, your finger into the water and it's just a little bit too hot, that's about the perfect temperature. So then I lower the temperature. I begin to pour the sugar in. So initially, I'll use about a quarter, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of the, the sugar. And while it's still under medium heat, I'll stir it until it dissolves into the water. It's not going to all dissolve into the water. Some of it will be remaining, but the majority of it will. And it really depends upon your ability to, to, to heat the water and what you have as to how that works out. But you just want to have it to the point that it's getting uncomfortable to the touch, but no more than that, because then the, the yeast will be killed. And you need those little beasties to turn the sugar from the pineapples and the the sugar that we're putting in into pineapple. So now I've I've almost completely dissolved the sugar, and that's about somewhere around a third of a kilo of sugar. Again, I've I've washed my hands multiple times, and that's just about the point that it's starting to get uncomfortable. So now, we'll take the, the sugar mixture, we'll transfer half of it into a, a new pot, we'll take another bottle of water, being careful to make sure that we don't reveal the name. We'll fill the, the pot back up. We'll also fill, fill the other one back up. We'll heat the water back up just, just a little bit. Then we'll add half of the remaining sugar to this, half of the remaining sugar to that. And then as we, as we need to, when we, when we fill the, the bottles, we'll add a little bit more water. gets transferred into alcohol. So even though there's a lot of sugar in here, the sugar really converts to alcohol. water up too much because if it's too hot it'll kill all the yeast and then all of your efforts are are wasted see the sugar is almost all dissolved there's a little bit left in the bottom but that that's okay we'll we'll pick that up at the end we're going to put the other one back up here for just a little bit Pour the rest of the sugar in there. And then we're going to mix that in. So in the Philippines, finding a funnel is really, really hard. So we, we made one from, from an old water bottle. 
So now the idea is just to get all of the sugar water. Let's get the other. there's going to be a lot of bubbling going on. And that's about it. We'll set that aside. You see there's there's stuff on the bottom. Just need to shake that up and make sure that it's all distributed inside. The bottle's a little bit warm to the touch, but not bad. And now we're ready to let it ferment. The fermentation process takes the sugar the yeast converts it to alcohol. So in that process, the yeast lets off a lot of carbon dioxide, which has to be released. But we don't want other yeast to come in to contaminate what it is that we're making. And so that's why I use a water lock. A lot of recipes just say you can put a, a uh, wet cloth over it and, and re-wet it every day. I think the water lock is the best way to do it because there's no way that anything can get back up inside. So that's what I'm gonna do with this, this batch. And it's very simple. How I made this is using irrigation hose and connectors like this and like this, and just basic quarter inch tubing. And again, I have a uh, irrigation uh, connector here, and I've got a little bit of tubing here that goes down into the water. So now I'm just gonna put tap water into this because it's never gonna get sucked back into the, into the beer, so that's okay. I'm going to fill this with tap water. Screw the lid on. Screw the lid on and we're done. Yep. Now we wait for three days. Now you can see in the background, I've already got a, a batch that's going. It's been going now for two days. You see the, the bubbles coming up and, and the carbon dioxide coming out of the, out of the bottle. That'll be ready in another day or so. And my guess is that it will be about 8% alcohol. So, for now, thanks guys for tuning in. And we'll catch up with you when the, the product is done. Have a good day. Take care.